now kind of moving forward with the conversation, William Rodriguez, the story of your survival has never changed and is corroborated by a number of witnesses and directly contradicts, of course, the official story of what happened on 9-11. Your heroic actions should have brought you mainstream media attention. And this is this is the most interesting aspect of this because I have traveled with you internationally and you are res you are respected highly. You've met world leaders all over the world. The international community knows about you knows about all the other survivors, family members, and rescue workers who are calling for more accountability and more truth from our government. But sadly, here in the United States, the mainstream media has widely uh, ignored your voice, has largely ignored your heroic actions, and they have given that voice to a lot of uh, crazy conspiracy theorists who were theorizing what actually happened on 9-11, which is something that didn't need to happen. Why do you think you were ignored so much by the mainstream media here in the United States, but yet so well accepted in the international community? I don't have the answer to that. All I can say is it's more difficult for them to attack a survivor, a person that was there from the very beginning to the very end. We was 102 minutes of uh, horror that I have to go through. And uh, when people take, like my story, they have created many conspiracy theories, as you said. You have been uh, able to meet with people that were with me, people that I saved, and, and so on. And you have seen it uh, firsthand. Uh, I guess that the media uh, wants to highlight uh, the crazy ones uh, because it's easier to have uh, um, somebody to attack uh than to have like you said accountability uh we have uh like you said traveled together you have seen how top government officials in different countries have treated me uh, you know it, it's not like they don't know here because i have been treated very well by very top government officials uh pre presidential candidates president uh former presidents as you know and uh, but what do they do with the information? You know, they, they just you know put the blind side on it. Um, and this, it's not only me; it has been with all the victims. That's why the survivors of 9/11 has become such a powerful political force. There you go with the Sadraga bill, with uh, uh, um, uh, the unveiling of the 28 pages from the Saudi government. Uh, the, uh, creating the 9-11 Commission, creating the, um, uh, the in different investigations that have gone through, even though it, they didn't do the extra step. And I believe that, you know, the sad thing is that nobody was accountable for the errors and mistakes that happened on 9-11. On they say they were not looking for, for guilt even though there was many guilt. When the government of the United States fell in every level, I'm talking about the government itself. I'm talking about uh, uh, security, uh, uh, militarily, uh, every level failed on 9-11. It was uh, a fiasco. Everybody has to agree with that. Uh, they preferred probably not only the media, but the government to try to make the nation look a little better than actually happened on 9-11. 9-11, everybody. Yeah, I think it's very clear that there was no accountability at all of our elected representatives. I mean, they they came to you right after 9-11. I mean, you have pictures with uh, Hillary Clinton and and George W. Bush, but but then when you didn't change your story, they, they kind of left you alone, even though they were promising political aspirations for you. You are correct about that. Uh, it's, it's like... Uh, how you call it? Uncomfortable. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an uncomfortable witness. It makes them uncomfortable. No, that's very true. And I wanted to ask you, what is your understanding of what's happening now, especially with the 28 pages being released last year? There's now a new lawsuit against Saudi Arabia here in the United States uh, saying that Saudi Arabia financed the dry run of 9-11. Uh, we know Saudi Arabia has threatened economic actions against the United States if these lawsuits do pursue. pursue. But what is your understanding of it since you've been following this issue very closely? Well, if anybody has followed what I've been doing, 
doing. I've been trying to engage the king of Saudi Arabia to avoid all of this by simply uh, having a meeting with the uh, victims of 9-11. And they have actually went, they go crazy because uh, they try to ignore me. I contacted the embassy. I contacted the king directly many times. Uh, you know, it, they actually threatened the government that if they pass the law to allow them to sue the JASTA law, um, they will dump $400 billion in, in U.S. assets. It's never going to happen because they have vested interest. You know, they dropped that. They're not going to get anything from us. So it's never going to happen. Yeah, and it didn't happen. Uh, but they uh, created it. And don't follow my voice. You just go on the Internet, go on Twitter, go into the Saudi embassy, go to the Saudi embassy in uh, other countries, go to the king's uh, uh, Twitter account, the, uh, uh, you call it, the um, uh, exterior relation uh, uh, minister uh, uh, account, and you will see that they all put out a campaign to try to overturn the lawsuit or the, for why? Why? It doesn't make any sense. And at the same time, they pay over a hundred thousand dollars a month to public relations company, including the Podesta Group, to try to uh, lobby congressmen to try to overturn this law. Imagine they're spending so much money instead of giving that money to the victims, and then you know, wash your hands. They, no. They're doing the opposite because they don't want to they don't want to accept the guilt because it opens a whole Pandora box. And sadly, you know, Trump went over there dancing with the king and dancing with everybody and chummy, 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 chummy. And you know, it, it makes us look worse as victims and survivors, thinking there's many victims that, that that you know believe Trump was gonna do the right thing, and they got fooled. Believe me, they got fooled. Well, they had every reason to because Donald Trump during the election cycle was saying Bush knew about 9-11, was pointing the finger directly at Saudi Arabia when it came to 9-11. And then when he became president, he's now off in Saudi Arabia working on one of the biggest weapons deals for them with his son-in-law personally calling Lockheed Martin to make sure that they get a better deal for Saudi Arabia. Now, the United uh, States government, uh, yeah. Because Raytheon is doing the smart weapons uh, that they needed because they have dirty weapons over there, which means that they cannot control precisely when they use it and they are using it, uh, uh, they are trying to use it against Yemen. So uh, what it's doing is in uh, pulling United States indirectly into the conflict with Yemen, you see? Because uh, $40 million here is, is a lot of money, of course, and uh, he can come and claim, oh, I, I got $40 billion uh, on a deal. And we know that he has not been effective uh, doing any deal making since he became the president. Uh, he sold us the idea of the art of the deal, and we have seen nothing. So what uh, you have here is that the Saudi has basically uh, gone away with uh, with murder when it comes to uh, do whatever they want. And it's important to note here, with the United States protecting them for so many years, not even trying to release the 28 pages. And then when they did release the 28 pages, there's still redacted information in there, but proves the new information that what we're talking about with this new lawsuit, with them financing a dry one, the U.S. government hid this information. And I think that is just basis enough to see that there's something wrong here. You don't need to go into all these crazy theories and speculations thinking exactly what happened on 9-11. No theory. That's real stuff that, you know, you can go and get yourself. You know, there's a FOIAs that have been done. There's uh, release information that has been done by media outlets. And uh, we've seen it. You know, we have seen the stuff. And uh, we are appalled that, uh, you know, we're protecting... Uh, the, the Saudis, the Saudi government, because our interests in the region, that's all it is. The interests are more important than the interests of the families. That's what we have here. That's an extremely very important point that needs to get out to the rest of America. Um, if, if you want this information out there, you have to share it. There's a reason William Rodriguez is being ignored by the mainstream media while being accepted by the international community. You don't want to accept it. 
he just tried to to ignore me. And I said, the more you ignore me, the more famous you make me. Because I got, you know, interviews from Russia, from Malaysia, from Iran, from all the countries that he probably hates. Exactly. But not here on the U.S. mainstream media, only on real independent media. Now, Willie, William, any last words um, about just the families, the victims, how you're doing? Stay vigilant. Uh, uh, keep the mission up. Uh, this is a mission for the long run. They are expecting us for us to get tired. They, that's how they win. Oh, they're going to get tired. Oh, you know, just give them time. They're going to be quiet. You know, just do the mission. Just continue to try to get to the bottom of what happened. Uh, and, and again, try to, try to stay away from all the conspiracy theories, and, but be vigilant. We need to do that. We need to get to the bottom of what happened. That's an incredibly important message, William. Thank you so much. If you want to know about Willie Rodriguez, the link to his contact information will be in the description below. Thank you again so much for watching. Subscribe. Stay tuned for more here on YouTube.com forward slash we are change.